What's going on gang? Ball Matrix here and today we are taking a look at two giant figures. Today we are taking a look at Hasbro's Titans Returns Fortress Maximus and Takara's Fortress Maximus. We're going to be comparing the differences and the similarities to both figures since they're pretty much the same. So let's open them up and take a look. Before we take a look at the figures very quickly, I wanted to show you the differencing in the packaging. Hasbro is here on the left, that's that one, and Takara is here on the right. As you can see, Takara seems to, well, package it obviously differently, but whole, as opposed to Hasbro, which ripped an arm off. Before we get into the full review, I want to show some accessories. First off, we have some sticker sets. Here on the left, we have the Hasbro sticker sets. And here on the right, we have the sticker sets, the instructions, and here are the Titan Returns instructions, and a three-part Master Sword. Just wanted to show you guys these things because I'm not going to put stickers on them. Now let's talk about the figures. First, we're going to talk about the little Titan Masters. Here on the left, we have Emissary, and here on the right, we have Cerebros. Emissary is the Hasbro version, Cerebros is the Japanese version. Yes, I realize that gets a little bit confusing, but the Japanese Takara line has always called the little robot headmaster Cerebros, while in the US, this little dude was Spike. They are exactly the same, save for the paint. I find it really interesting because the paint on on Emissary in the face is much whiter than the silver paint on Cerebros, but then they have this weird gimmick where the Japanese has, well, blue arms and black and gray legs, while the USA version has gray arms and blue legs. Really strange color choices, but eh, oh well. Transformation into head mode for both of them is exactly the same, and then we get to see the two different heads. We've got the Cerebros head here on the left and Fortress head here on the right. As you can see, there are some major differences between the styling of the two. So let's go ahead and talk about their bodies. I really wish I had a wide angle lens for this, but I don't, so you guys are just gonna have to bear with me. Here we have the Hasbro version of Fortress Maximus in city mode. Now, as you can see, the city mode is not the city mode that we here in the West are used to when we think of Fortress Maximus. It's kind of like a bastardized version of it, but the same thing can be said for the Takara version. It's just different colors. There's a lot more white here, and I like the white, it's fine, but I actually like the Hasbro paint better, because it really does remind me of the original Fortress Maximus City Mode more. And now we're going to do the Takara version sounds. Now taking the tower modes out of the cities, we're going to go ahead and transform them into their robot modes. They're already pretty much transformed, so all we're going to do is flip out the arms on both figures and then deposit the heads, and that's pretty much it for their transformation from their city mode versions into... 
whoops, into their robot modes. You do have a tendency to start the music or the lights and sounds. The only lights are these little red lights here at the upper chest, and then obviously their sound box. Both of these figures look freaking fantastic. I absolutely adore both of these, but it's nice to get a different variety in the figures. Posability is good, but man, do they have a lot of backpack going on here. As I said with posability, you have got shoulder swivels, in and out, ball joints in the elbows, no fist articulation, and then some swivels and hinges in the legs. That's about it. Unfortunately, USA version Cerebros doesn't come with a weapon. However, Fortress does come with a weapon. He gets part of the Master Sword, which is very, 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 very cool. I like that a lot. Both of these figures are equally awesome and definitely worth having in your collection. I do wish they turned into, like, computers or something like they do in the shows. Oh, well. One thing that is very, very cool about the city modes is that these are designed to attach to the different base modes of the leader class figures. So for example, we've got one connection here that's in the front, and then each one of the arms has these little flaps that fold out that are red on the USA version and blue on the Japanese version that also fold out and can connect to the base modes. So the base modes would be sitting right about there, and then their ramps would be folded up to connect. Kids can have a lot of fun with these figures in their base mode, simply with the Titan Masters, and that's really the best thing to use for this guy, since the figures are big, but they're not so big that they fit the fully sized Legends class figures. I've got Wheelie here, and it's just not quite sized well for the Legends class, but it's perfect for the Titan Masters or Micro Masters if you have any. And now to take a look at the battle cruiser mode, which I don't particularly care for, simply because it's just the figure lying down. It's not bad, but both of the figures are, well, they look kind of silly in this mode, I'll be honest. I do appreciate the giant cannons, though. Oops, my camera cable is caught. It's... It's definitely just a giant mode because we could. I do appreciate the city top there on the Japanese version, specifically right here. You know, it's got windows. It looks like a bridge to a ship, while the USA version just looks like blue plastic. So I do appreciate that. And Fortress and Cerebros there make a nice, well, skyscraper topper. Overall, this mode is probably the weakest, but it's not awful. Both cannon sets do pose and can move easily. However, I really like the gray here against the red, as opposed to the whole plastic piece being red here on the USA version. There are definitely positives and negatives to both. I like both, but I have to give the win in this mode to the Takara version, while in city mode to the USA version. One thing I don't understand is why the heck they bothered to include this thing. This side piece. Yes, it was in the original series. Yes, the original figure had a side piece that actually did something in city mode, but it doesn't do anything here. It just hangs off to the side. And in the USA version, it's just got that circle on the top, while in the Japanese version, it's painted more in the front and silver and red to match the rest of the figure. And here's a comparison between the two Fortress Maximus figures and Generations Titan class Metroplex. As you can see, Metroplex is in his battle station mode, and he is just about as long as the Fortress Maximuses. Maximus I, Max... the two Fort, Fort Max figures. I do like Generations Metroplex, but man, it, I don't like the battle station mode on any of these guys. Something I forgot to mention in city mode is both the Takara version and the Hasbro version of Fort Max have that weird joint that Fort or Metroplex had where he could swing this arm behind the body in city mode. I understand reusing parts, but it's pointless because Fort Max in city mode doesn't, it just doesn't work. See what I mean? That looks completely stupid. Going from either city or battleship mode into robot mode is very easy. To start off with, we're going to grab the Cerebros in the middle or Fortress, pull it up and put it off to the side. Come over here to this side where you store, or this panel, where you store the Headmaster or Titan Master. 
put him off to the side. Then grab the legs and straighten them out if they're not already straight from being in battleship mode. And then make sure that the legs are slid to their outward position. Next, come down to the feet, unpeg them, flip them up, and then snap them into place. And then stand the figure up. Next, take the midsection, collapse the city bits into the skyscraper, and then split them open and peg them in along the sides of the abdomen. Rotate the arms down and into place. And then turn the fists such that, well, you get fists like that. And you do that for the other side. And then drop the ramp along the back of the figure like that. Just a quick warning about the ramp section. This piece has a tendency to pop off and fall off very easily. Actually, on the Takara version, I had an issue where it would not connect to the little pegs that it's supposed to connect to. I had to break out a hobby knife and actually cut away some excess plastic on the holes. So even if you get whichever version you end up picking up, just be aware that that could be a possibility. Now, before we get into the transformation of the head, there is one little bit of transformation I forgot to show you guys, and I didn't do this on purpose. It just neglected to... I just neglected to remember to do it. So when it's in emissary mode or in the city mode, his heels and feet are folded up. In robot mode, you want to fold them down so you get slightly taller figures. And by taller, I mean you get figures that are on the level, if not a little bit taller, than the current deluxe class Titan Masters. So as you can see, they are somewhere in between a deluxe and a Voyager class. Transformation into head mode is pretty easy, and it's very similar to the original G1 figure. Start off by folding up the arms, like we are going to transform into city mode. Fold up the feet and the heels. Turn the figure upside down. Flip down the legs and peg them into place, like so. Flip out these little antennae, and then flip up the head. And for Fortress, it's the same transformation. Obviously, because, well, they're the same figures, practically. So, flip up the arms, fold up the heels, fold up the feet, flip up the legs, flip out the antennae, and there we go. Biggest difference between the two is some paint in the face, as you can see. A little bit of paint up here at the top of the head. No giant red plus symbol on the on the uh, forehead, which I believe is a sticker. But the one cool thing that I like better about the Takara version than the Hasbro version, which let me flip these, are the red eyes. I really like the red eyes. Otherwise, I actually like the Hasbro version head better. As you most likely have noticed, the LED in the Hasbro version here on the left seems to be much, much pow more powerful than the one here on the right. Hasbro's up first, followed by Takara. Both Fortress Maximus figures look very, very good in robot mode, even though the paint schemes both of both are a little bit different. As you can see, Hasbro is on the left and Takara is on the right. I get a brave Maximus feeling from the Hasbro version more than a Fortress Maximus. But the Takara version is more akin to a combination of Fort Max and Metroplex. It's very strange. Now, obviously, there are stickers missing, and stickers would go a long way to improving the overall looks. I do appreciate the look of the Hasbro version a little bit more than the Takara. Not saying the Takara is bad at all. There are some detailing that the Takara has that the Hasbro one just really could use. But I like the Hasbro one more. I like the darker color scheme. I like the light up in the eyes better. Overall, I just like the look of the Hasbro version better. But the Takara version does not have the problems that the Hasbro version has. A lot of the joints here on the Hasbro version are loose, are wobbly, are wiggly, while the Takara version doesn't really have those. I mean, the Takara version feels a lot more solid. Lights and sounds are activated by the button here on the chest for both of them. Master 
The addition of the Master Sword for Fortress Maximus, the Takara version, is a major positive in my book. This is probably one of the coolest accessories. It splits into three different parts, so you could effectively have three different figures wielding this giant freaking sword. I mean, the sword itself is well over a foot long and totally worth it. I love this thing. Now, I know several third-party vendors are going to be making a version of the Master Sword, and I believe Takara is going to be selling the Master Sword separately on its own. And just for scale of these figures, here is Titan's Return Soundwave and Titan's Return Galvatron, with Titan's Return Hardhead and CW Bruticus. Yep, these are not tiny figures. And also for scale, here is Generations Titan's Class Metroplex. As you can see, there are some elements borrowed, but not entirely the same figures. No matter which Fortress Maximus you decide to purchase, if you decide to purchase it at all, you're not going to have a bad time. Both of these figures are pretty darn great. The only differences in the figures other than paint scheme are the Headmasters are slightly different, and the USA version, or at least my version, is a little bit more wobbly than the Takara version, and obviously the giant Master Sword there on the right. As I said, overall, both of them are excellent, and you can't go wrong with either. Gang, I hope you've enjoyed this epic video review of Titan's Return, Fortress Maximus, and Takara's Fortress Maximus. As always, I am Bolt Matrix. As you like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.